because Perfect. I need to get rid of stuff. Anyway. Oh, I know. I know. I've been like sending people stuff. I'm like, oh, we are going live. Are we live? Oh, yes. nice. Okay. All right. Scoot this in a little bit. Scoot this out a little bit. <laughs> I'm always like, hey. Everybody. All right. Oh, so we you have some people. people. Hey guys, Hello. how are you? Can you guys hear us okay? Is everything good on your end? Is everything, uh, you can hear us good? Please us let good? us know. If you guys can hear us, let us know because we're waiting for the comments to pop up. Comments. Oh, cool. Does this show comments? Mm hmm. Awesome. I love it. All right. I don't see any comments yet. So give us a little shout out <laughs> if you can hear us. Hopefully, we can see the comments. Show. show. Say I can all right, guys. Oh, all right. Yes. Yay. Perfect. Cool. Hello. We may be a little delay. I know that we have usually. Yeah. There, there we go. 15 seconds. Awesome. So all right. Cool. So there is a little bit of a delay. Perfect. Yeah. Hi, guys. We're going to wait while we've been live for a minute 15. So I guess we can go ahead and start. Hello. Um, just to introduce myself, if some of you guys don't know who I am, I'm Alexis May. I am a hairstylist here in Orange County, and this is my YouTube channel, and I love doing education for hairstylists, as well as some fun styling for clients, and all that other fun stuff in between. And today, I am here with Jamie. She is one of my friends, an amazing hairstylist, but not only does she do amazing things behind the chair, but she also does amazing things for other hairstylists like what we're doing today, teaching about Instagram tips and all of that stuff to grow your business. So go ahead and introduce yourself. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for having me. I'm like so excited to do this. I have never done a YouTube live before. I used to do Periscope back in the day. Oh, yeah. I used to do Facebook live. Um, I do Facebook live a little bit, but YouTube live's new to me, so I'm excited. So thank you guys so much for having me. Thanks for tuning in and uh, enjoying, enjoying this. So I'm Jamie Dana. I am a hairstylist and salon owner. We're actually in my salon right now. If you guys can the see, cutest. I super mean, fun. I mean, hey, you know, a little so macrame, a little fiddly, <laughs> real hipster. Um, so I'm here located in Orange County, California, and I've been a stylist for about seven years now. And I work behind the chair three days a week. And then the other days I actually teach other hairstylists how to use social media to grow their business. So I do kind of business building tips, um, social media, and my big wheelhouse is Instagram. That's what I love to do and that's what I love helping other stylists do. But I'm also really passionate about creating a community of like-minded hairstylists. So I love getting together with hairstylists um, in my area. Um, I sometimes do, I'm a part of a little meetup thing that we do um, once a month called Blend. And I just love meeting up with other hairstylists. So anytime I go out of town, I try to always go into someone's salon and meet up with somebody because I just love That's hanging out so with people. Fun. So That's yeah. Fun. So to me, like hanging out with her, we actually have never hung out in person. It's been like we met actually. We met time. in class and I didn't even really embarrassing, I didn't even remember. And <laughs> <laughs> well, you know why? You know why? Because when, okay, so this was actually like three years ago, I think. Ago. It was at Jenny Streep's class, mm -hmm. um, Confessions of a Hair Sauce, if you guys aren't familiar. We went to her class, and I remember seeing you, and I looked you up on Instagram, and you had like 3,000 followers or something mm -hmm. at the time, and I was like, oh my gosh, this girl's like Instagram famous, <laughs> like what is going on? And so I was like, oh my God, I better follow her. So yeah, so I started following you, and then I just kind of stayed connected, and then you reached out to me. And then I found her later on, little did I know that we had already met at a class. Yeah. So it was it was a pretty cool way to like organically yeah. happen. Yeah. And um, now I get the benefit of having her as a friend and then hanging out with her in her cute little studio and doing this with you guys. Yeah. So I have a little list of questions that we're gonna go over with Jamie. And I also am gonna be doing a giveaway. So I'm kind of winging this because I just decided today that I'm like, hey, I have a whole bunch of hairstylists that are watching this video, so why not do a giveaway? So I'm gonna go over that real fast and then tell you how you're gonna win. I have three different giveaways. The mega one we is going, good stuff. Yeah, is good going stuff. to be this cute purse. Dude. You're going, okay, hold on. Going live again. All right, we're back. Sorry Someone guys. calling me, sorry. Okay, so you guys are going to win this purse. You're gonna win the InStyler 
four of my favorite Evo products and a Fumar brush. Oh my gosh. So one person is going to win this. It's so cute. It's got like this. Dude, this is like the cutest thing I know. Ever. It's got oh a little gosh. tassel. I'm kind of so jealous. I kind of want One person is going to win that. And then two people are going to win a smaller prize. So you're going to win the four Evo products. I'm not going to take them out because it goes too long. And a Fumar brush. So basically, all you have to do is ask us some questions, either along the way or just if you have a random question, throw it in because we're going to do a mini Q&A at the end of this video. So if you guys want to be entered to win one of those products or the Mego Whammy product purse, then purse. go ahead and yeah. <laughs> whatever that you know, thing, big is. thing. <laughs> um, go ahead and ask us some questions either right now or along the way. So we're going to get started. So first question, which is something that I see a lot of stylists ask because of the new algorithm and the change of everything, is how many posts should you post a day? Okay, so with Instagram, I think that it's really important to stay consistent with your Instagram. So whatever that looks like for you, you need to stay consistent. Um, Instagram really cares a lot about the algorithm. As you guys know, it's changed the way that we do things on Instagram. Um, and so it's really, really important to stay consistent. So for me, I know that I can stay consistent by doing one post a day or a post every other day kind of thing. So um, that's just what works for me. Um, but when I was in a time of building my Instagram platform, I was really posting once a day, sometimes twice a day. Um, so like I said, it all depends on what works for you and how much content you have. I know that some people like freak out when I say one time a day. They're like, oh my gosh, how could I do that? Or how yeah. could you even do two or three times a day? Um, but whatever you choose to do, you just want to stay consistent with it. So I would recommend if you're in a phase of wanting to really grow your Instagram platform, really trying to grow your following, get your name out there, I would recommend one to two to three times a day at max. Um, and then if you are kind of in just a season of, you know, relaxing, maybe kind of trying to grow your clientele, whatever it is, I would recommend doing, you know, once every other day, something like that. Um, I wouldn't go anywhere more than like four, you know, four days. Um, yeah. And if you are doing that, you just want to stay consistent. So if you do every fourth day, then make sure that you're staying on top of it. Don't do a post and then go a week and then do two posts in a row and then go a month and then do like five posts because you forgot. So and then people forget about you and you don't have that engagement. Right. So And that's what's really huge with the Instagram algorithm mm -hmm. is they really rely on people that are consistent. And so you have to stay consistent with your Instagram. Um, otherwise, they basically think of you as kind of like they push you away. If, if um, you know, they kind of push you down in the feeds if you're not staying consistent. Nobody I, wants that. And nobody wants that. <laughs> I kind of think of it as like a metabolism. So when your metabolism, you know, when you're trying to like diet and eat all healthy, they're like, okay, eat snacks throughout the day because it keeps your metabolism up. What happens is if you don't eat, you know, for like 12 hours, your metabolism takes this huge drop. Mm -hmm. The Instagram algorithm is exactly the same way. So think of it as like a metabolism. Eat snacks, you know, like it's going to go. Diet, right? That's so perfect. <laughs> there you go. That's so perfect. So after that, when you are learning how to post and keep your clientele and other hairstylists or just whoever engaged, what time should you post and does it matter what time you post? So I think it matters, it matters a great deal, yes. Yeah. So a lot of people are like, oh no, the Instagram algorithm doesn't matter because it's not chronological, but I don't agree with that. So yes, it totally matters the time you post, but it's gonna be different for everyone's audience. So for mm -hmm. my audience, my audience likes to see my posts typically around like eight or nine in the morning or seven to nine in the morning, and then also like six to nine at night. So morning and at night are the times that I usually choose to post on my Instagram. Um, but you also just want to evaluate your following. So if you have a business profile for Instagram, the easiest way that you can do this is you can actually go to your analytics tab. It's going to be at the top on your page. There's like a little, looks like a little Verizon bar button. You click that and if you scroll all the way down to the followers, click that and it's going to show you what time your followers are most likely on Instagram. So for me, my followers tend to wake up around like 6 to 7 a.m. And then they're, you know, they start going to bed around like 9, 10 o'clock. So I would want to post within that window. Um, I also have a thing that I use. It's called Icono Square. And it tells me like the exact time that I should post. So that Icono oh, wow. Square is nice. great. It's a program. It's, uh, I think it's like $54 a year. But still, it like works out to like $4 a month. Like mm -hmm. super cheap. It's like a latte. Um, so it's a, it's a paid program. You enter all your stuff in and it gives you all the types of analytics. It's an amazing program. Program. Highly recommend it, Icono Square. Um, and yeah, and it basically tells you what times are the best times for you to post for your audience. But yes, it does matter. 
I'm gonna have to get that because yeah. I know for me and my audience, I normally post at like between six to nine. I never post after that. Right. And then I will post at like not before five because if I do post before five, I'm not getting that engagement. So I've learned what time I should have, you know, my stuff done because if I post, sometimes I get some engagement at like lunchtime, but still knowing when to hit those times yeah. is important because I mean, oh, yeah. I feel like some of us, we post something, then you don't get likes and you're like, hmm, you get sad. So it is really so important. <laughs> and know. again, with the algorithm, if you get a lot of engagement right away, it actually pushes your uh, your photo further out into the feed. So it's really important. It's kind of one of the tricks with the Instagram algorithm. So you want to make sure that you are posting at really good times for your audience. And again, like I said, everyone's audience is different. And I actually play around with this. I like to experiment with my Instagram a lot. So I was on the East Coast, and so I actually did a post around 7 a.m. that time, which is 4 a.m. West Coast time. And my audience lives on the West Coast. Typically, I do have some people in New York and mm -hmm. things like that. But I posted at like 4 a.m. and oh my gosh, I got like no likes on my photo. <laughs> it was really sad. And I was like, well, that sucks. Like, so anyways, but I think it's fine to experiment here and there, but figure out what time's going to be best for your audience. Perfect. Yes. So tell me about this 5-3 rule that I keep hearing about. All right. The secret 5 plus 3 rule. So I actually have a whole online course called Oh Hot Gram, and it's basically an entire front end to back end course, online course on how to use Instagram to grow your business as a hairstylist. I wrote it specifically for hairstylists because I really saw this need within the hair industry um, of people wanting to learn Instagram, but not just wanting to learn Instagram for any kind of business. They were like, yes. okay. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. It's your mom. Yes. Sorry guys, we keep having her phone call. She's real popular everyone, person over here. Everyone, everyone calls me. This happens to me all the time. Time. I mean, it's like, I never get phone calls and then I only get phone calls when I'm live. It's like, okay. Yeah. So anyways, um, what I was saying is I have that whole online course called Oh Hot Gram. It is a paid program to get into, um, and we're going to talk more about it at the end. But basically, I found nobody was talking about Instagram for hairstylists. That would be for photographers mm -hmm. or, you know, maybe a small business owner or for big businesses. And nobody or just was, all businesses Or businesses in all together, and no one was speaking to me. And so I really saw that that was a need and I really wanted to make sure that I had a resource out there because people were like, what time do I post? What, mm -hmm. you know, all these kind of questions that she's asking me today. These are things that people want to know. You guys want to know. So anyways, I created a hot gram and in that program, I talk about my secret five plus three rule. And basically what it is, is you want to engage with other people on Instagram. If you want people to engage with you, you want to engage back with them. So I say you want to engage by liking someone's photo, five of their photos, and then commenting on three of them. So I'll find somebody that I think might be a good potential follower or somebody that I think might be a good potential client. And I go on their page and I go and I like about five of their photos and I comment on three to them and the, and three of them. And what that's doing is it's actually adding eight notifications in their notifications feed. And it doesn't look spammy because it's mm -hmm. eight. Now if you like all 30, that might which, look a little stalkerish. Which we get. It looks yeah. a little Sometimes stalkerish. People have that, you know, they do that. Yeah. So if you just like, you know, you have like eight of them, and anytime you leave a comment on someone's photo, they're way more likely to come back over and check out your exactly. page. So if somebody comments on your photo, you check them out. You're like, oh, what'd they say? What did they want? You know, what's going on? So I always say it's really important to not only like their photos, but comment on them as well. So my five plus three rule is like five photos and comment on somebody's three photos, and that will get them to come check you back out on your page. And I love that too because it's a way to, it's not just Instagram and what you can do and all this stuff, but it's engaging with people because Jamie's talking about building a community, which is something that I love too. I love having other hairstylists come. And I think that's the community that a lot of the stylists are going towards. Oh Being gosh. friends with other stylists, supporting other stylists, and then also interacting with your clients so you're not just someone who does hair, but you're also someone that likes to invest in more than just let me take your money and go. It's way more than that nowadays. It's a relationship, it's education, and all of the things all combined. So that's a super great way to authentically 
um, get to kind of know someone through Instagram. Absolutely. And my friend Nina um, Kovner, her Instagram name is Passion Squared. If you guys don't already follow her, go check her out. But she's always saying that social media is about social. Like, mm -hmm. you should be social. Like, we should interact. It's not just like, oh, I want to get likes. I want to get comments on my stuff. No, you should be going out and liking other people's things and commenting on their stuff. And again, creating those relationships like you just said. So, yeah. I love it. Absolutely. Love it. Okay, so... What are some of your favorite apps for editing your pictures? Ooh, somebody asked that question too. I saw that pop up earlier <laughs> and I was like, we're going to get to it. So my favorite editing apps, well, my like most favorite editing app is Viscocam. I love Viscocam. I love that one too. Um, I have an Android phone, so I'm not an iPhone user like everyone in the whole wide world is. I <laughs> use an Android. I'm like the lame nerdy person that has my Android phone. And back in the day when Viscocam was only on iPhone, I was like seriously contemplating getting an iPhone just for Viscocam. Like I love that app so much. So Viscocam is the app that I use to edit all of my photos. Um, and I love it. I go really kind of, you know, I love just like just adjusting them a little bit. And I, a lot of people ask like, should I edit my photo? Should I not? And absolutely. If you look at a photographer's, you know, photos, mm -hmm. they're edited. They're going to be a little brighter. They're going to be a little bit more contrasted. Sometimes straight out of the photo, it's not exactly what the eye sees. So sometimes you need to adjust them a little bit and there's nothing wrong yeah. with that. You just want to make sure that you're not being overly, you know, false with your editing. So Sometimes people will use apps like Facetune or other editing apps where they blur the line a little bit or blur something. And to me, that's not really authentic. So that's not an app that I use a lot of. Um, I very rarely use that app. Sometimes I'll do it if I, my client has a little blemish or something mm -hmm. like that. But um, for the most part, I'm just like brightening it a little bit, contrasting it a little bit. Um, you just want to make sure that you're not doing something that's not what it looked like in real life. So don't oversaturate it or over contrast it. Um, or, you know, if it was brassy in real life, don't make it look like it mm -hmm. wasn't because that's not true. So being authentic with your Instagram is really important. But um, yeah, editing it is totally fine. So ViscoCam is my go-to editing app. I love it. Yeah, and I like that she like went into it's totally professional to go and edit your pictures because sometimes like I share this with the girls at the salon because I'm like the crazy Instagram person that's like no you need to take your picture like this um knowing how like I feel like you learn a lot about how to take your pictures so you don't have to do as much editing but it's totally important because sometimes you're taking pictures of like her hair right now and you're trying to go get a picture of this soft pale pink right. and it's not showing up as much or it's like, let's say, you know, 6 p.m. and it's darker outside and it's just not showing it true to eye. I always say when you go to go edit your picture with using um, ViscoCam, because I use that as well. I love that app so much. Um, think of what your client looked like, true to your eye, and then go along the lines of editing that, maybe adding a little bit of clarity or something so that you're staying true because we see those pictures on mm -hmm. on all kinds of different sites and you can see like one picture before and one picture after and you're like, oh, that's so weird. She has silver hair, but like, why is her skin gray? You <laughs> learn. Or why is the background blue? Yeah, like, or like, my background before. I'm and, not sure what's going on there. And then you kind of get known as maybe not everything was true. So you want to keep it true to yourself so you are honest with your pictures. I think Absolutely. that's super important too. Yeah. Authenticity. Yes. Right. So how do you feel about watermarking and what apps would you use for watermarking? So to be totally honest, I actually don't watermark my photos. I noticed that today. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, she's going to ask this question. So I don't actually watermark my photos. And the reason why is, is I want my entire Instagram page. I think of it as like a magazine. So when I'm scrub, like, you know, flipping through a magazine, you don't see the photographer's watermark like on the photo. Instead, you'll see it like in the binding, like mm -hmm. really, really small, but you have to like really look for it. So to me, I want my page to flow really nicely. And to me, I just don't like watermark, the look of watermark. I also don't live in fear that someone's going to take my photo. Um, people are always constantly worried that like, oh shoot, if I watermark it, people are going to steal it. And then I'm not going to get traced back and blah, blah, blah. If people are going to steal your photo, they're going to figure out a way mm -hmm. to Photoshop off your watermark. And it so happens. It happens all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, we've seen a ton of my friends where they had the watermark, like, maybe right here on their, you know, their client's head, and it gets Photoshopped out. So, um, I don't think that you should watermark out of fear. Um, if you want to watermark, totally up to you. That's great. That's just not something that I choose to do. Um, but I do think it is great if you are, you know, getting reposted on, you know, different mm -hmm. pages, or if you're getting reposted on Pinterest, 
those are great ways to track your work back to who you are. So um, for me, if I was to post my work on Pinterest, I would actually watermark it before I put it on a Pinterest um, from, you know, whatever. So yeah, I don't watermark my photos, so I don't even have an app recommendation for it because it's not something that I use. All right. So, well, yeah. I mean, that's a great thing about learning because I am one of those people that one of my friend's pictures got stolen. <sighs> and was actually used in a magazine, in a hair magazine. So for me, I'm like, ugh, yeah. and it freaks me out. But I used, like, I went from the big watermarks like Gaitain had, because I like followed in his footsteps, and I'm like, what he does, I wanna do. Right. Which um, is completely opposite of me, because I like things clean and simple. So I've gone down to a really, really small watermark, and I use an app that is kind of like ViscoCam and all the other apps combined. It's called Preview. Mm -hmm. And I can do little tiny watermarks and fade it out to where you can't really see it in the pictures. So if you do choose to do it or you don't choose to do it, definitely don't use the big ones that are like across the face, across the yeah. face or like interrupting the hair because then you are just taking away from what you're doing right. so and you if you go scroll down on my Instagram you've probably seen some of my pictures that have been like that in the day. <laughs> but I've been adjusting it to be more aesthetically pleasing so that when clients look at it they really get to see the hair and they're not like oh what does that say yeah. so to each its own but knowing like do it a little bit smaller a little bit simpler and you can still save your um, work and another thing too to say about that is if you are going to use a watermark and you don't have necessarily a logo or something, make sure that you pick a font that really evokes your brand. So yes. a lot of times I see people using like basic fonts or fonts that don't really fit their style or personality. So make sure that you're using a font that's really like fits who you are and not just, you know, a font that you just found because like Comic Sans, something like that. Like don't yeah. use that. Make sure that you're using <laughs> something that actually fits back to who you are. Perfect. All right. So our next question, which is like something that I'm going to hop on here with her and kind of help answer because it's probably like my biggest thing when I look at other people's Instagrams is, and it goes into this, should someone do a business account? So a business account is basically where you link your Facebook to it and can have like a call to action button. So call, email, and directions. Mm -hmm. So how important is that to have that on your Instagram and why? So personally for me, I always recommend that if you are a hairstylist or a mm -hmm. salon, that you should have a business profile for Instagram. Um, I recommend it. There are people that are not recommending it. Um, and the reason why people are like a little intrepidatious about having one is because they really think that Instagram is going to start kind of haltering engagement with business profiles for Instagram. And the reason why is back in Facebook days in 2012, Facebook actually did this with their business pages for in, or their business pages on Facebook and it used to you'd get great engagement tons of people would see your posts you'd get all this organic reach and they added an algorithm and basically all the business pages stopped getting engagement they stopped getting organic reach and the only way to get them get like reach at all was through paid advertisement, so Facebook mm -hmm. ads. So people are really worried that the same thing's gonna happen with Instagram because Instagram was bought by Facebook. So people are all freaked out about it. My thing is, I actually know people that have used Facebook business pages and pushed through the algorithm. So instead of freaking out and like, okay, fine, I give up on Facebook, they kept going and they kept posting and they kept consistent and they kept a really good strategy on Facebook and now their pages are blowing up on Facebook. So I think the same thing with Instagram. The people that are like, nope, I'm not gonna do that, I'm not pushing through, I'm not gonna have this business profile for Instagram because I don't wanna pay for ads, mm -hmm. whatever. I have a feeling that in the end, it's all gonna work out. If you push through and you keep with a consistent strategy and you keep learning new techniques and, and learning about the algorithm and learning about all of that stuff, that you're gonna be fine. So back to what I was saying, I think it's important to have a business profile for Instagram because you do have those things like a mm -hmm. contact button um, you're able to post your address and people can click right through it. So a lot of times I'll jump on stylist's pages and you know they have an email in their bio. Well, a client has to now like remember that email and type it out and then go back to Instagram and hope and they got it right. It's right. And probably it's not, <laughs> especially if it's longer and maybe they spelled your name wrong or whatever it is. Which is something I get all the time because my yes. name is spelled differently. Right. So people are like constantly having to go back and forth versus if they have the business profile for Instagram, all you have to do is they click the button and it says email or text. Then they don't have to like remember your entire thing. 
So I think it's really important. Um, again, you're also able to have analytics, which is huge. It's built into the app. It's totally free. You can check out your most you know viewed posts, mm -hmm. your Instagram stories. You can see how many people clicked to your website, how many people clicked your call button, how many people saved, how many people pictures, saved your photos. Like it's things. incredible to see that. And so to me, the pros of having a business Instagram for um, a business page for Instagram is so much more valuable than the possible cons, which aren't even confirmed yet. People are just, again, the hype, the hysteria, freaking <laughs> out. It's not that big of a deal. So I say push through it. I say recommend it. Um, and I think that Instagram knows that you're a business anyways. So Instagram's not stupid. They know that you're posting, hey, click here to call, you know, mm -hmm. and, and make an appointment or, um, you know, call our stylist. If you write that in your caption, they know. And trust me, there's things coming out with Instagram which are very far in the future, but Instagram knows. They know a lot of stuff. So stuff's going to come out in the future and um, just, just know that they, they know you're probably a business. So if they're going to halt you on the business profile for Instagram, they're probably going to halt you more for not using it. So that's my two cents. Um, and another thing, and I know I go off on a tangent because it's something I'm passionate <laughs> about, obviously. Um, but I think it's okay to have to pay for Instagram ads every once in a while. I pay for them. I pay for Facebook ads and I don't think that there's a problem in it. It's your own business and you need to invest in it. So mm -hmm. every once in a while paying for an Instagram here, Instagram ad here or there is not too bad of a problem to have. And it's just great to have a free tool that we have already and it's fine to invest in it a little bit. So yeah, that's and what what's cool I don't know what your thoughts are. Is that like I just did my first time ever paying for an Instagram ad for this session that we're doing right now. So this whole time that I've had a business account, you don't have to, like it's not making you pay for anything. Right. It is free and then you have the option of paying for ads. So if you want to do a call to action like getting clients in the door or you're doing a summer special or you did this amazing post of a of a hair color that you did and you want a larger audience to see it than just who's following you, you could pay as little as like, I don't even it's know, like five bucks, five dollars yeah. up to however much you want to pay. So it can be, you know, your own. So this is the reason why I say you should have a business profile because I was a little unsure of exactly what it was supposed to do in the beginning. But here's the thing that I noticed. A lot of hairstylists, we were talking about this before we did this, mm. I go to their Instagram and there is three things that I don't see. Hi Shannon. Hey Shannon. Hey, Shannon <laughs> and Amanda here talking to each other. I love it. Um, three things that I see that people aren't doing. Stylists don't have their real name on their Instagram, so when they're going to try to get in contact with you, they have no idea who to ask for. Um, what's funny is that my my full name is Alexis May Scaletti, and I use Alexis May as my branding, and people call in and ask for that name. I love it. So they at least know who it is to ask for. The second thing is that... Um, we have no idea where people are. Located. So yeah. location. Yeah, where so where are you located? And within having a business profile for Instagram, it allows you to put that that address in there. So it's gonna make it easier for clients to hop onto your page, say, Oh my gosh, she's in my area, she's in Lake Forest, I can go get my hair done by her. So that's going to get someone to follow you faster, especially if they're like, hmm, she's in my area, maybe I'll follow and go see her later. So there's a lot of different reasons. And then um, the last one too is also putting, like, this isn't to do with the, the business side of having a profile, but just having in your bio your salon where you work at. Yeah. Because if they can't get in contact with you through a call, an email, um, DMs, we know we don't check them that often. I mean, you do check them and then you forget and there's no notification to go back and look at it. And it gets pushed down. So having your salon name so that it's easy for a client to get in touch with you and to make an appointment so you're not losing out on revenue. Because I, I realized through a client that I had two weeks ago that I had lost out on having a client because she had no idea where I was. So I went in and finally put in my location. So now anyone can see where I am and they can come get their hair done by me. So those are my three things that when I look at a profile, your real name, the location of where you're at, and then as an additional, your salon name. Absolutely. And I always say you want to make sure too, you have a way for people to contact you. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a business profile for Instagram, which if you decide not to have one, that's totally fine make sure you have your email or phone number in the bio because there's so many times I go on people's pages and there's literally 
no way to contact them. And mm -hmm. again, people aren't going to take that extra step to DM you and try to figure it all out or find your salon, you know, website. They're not going to. So if you have a way for them to click email, text, whatever you want to have set up on there, it makes it so much easier. And we live in an ADD world. Like people aren't like, oh, let me just spend five minutes yeah. trying to contact this girl. <laughs> no, they want to do it in like two seconds. They want to contact you right now and get an appointment with you right now. So it's really, really important to make sure that you have that all set up, especially in your bio. And again, yeah, location, that's huge. Like mm -hmm. I don't want a girl from Tennessee contacting me because she's not here in Orange County. I want to make sure that my Orange County clients can find me and yeah. Or if someone's Super coming fun. to visit, maybe they're like, hey, right. I'm coming to visit. I want to come get my hair done by you. I'm going to Disneyland. So, I'm going to go to Jamie's to get my hair done before I go to Disneyland. And you're getting told by Mandy that you need to start a YouTube channel. <laughs> oh, I know. Mandy, oh my gosh. You're not the first person to tell me that. Okay, so we are going to... I know that she talks about this within her program, but how important are hashtags? Ooh, hashtags. Okay, so hashtags is one of the things that... I feel like people are the most confused about like, okay, mm -hmm. how do I use them? Do I use 30? Do I put them in the comment? How do I do that? Which one should I use? Like, it's so confusing. So if you guys are interested, I actually have a free hashtag how to guide and workbook. Um, if you go to jamiedana.com slash hashtag workbook, it's absolutely free. You can literally download it. And the cool thing about that workbook and why I don't just like say, oh, here's, here's the strategy behind it. It's because it actually has you go in and you like write stuff down and it tells you how to research which hashtags to be using. Which so I've that's done super it. Huge. Yeah, I've done she it. Has I it. use it. Yeah. From a, like when I saw her do this a while ago, doing the free hashtag workbook, and now I use it for every single one of my pictures. Yeah. So. And it makes a huge difference. So I would recommend that it's um, Jamie Dana. So J A M I E Dana D A N A um, dot com slash hashtag workbook. It's absolutely free. Um, but anyways, just to kind of answer the question. You want to make sure that if you are trying to attract local clients, make sure that you're using local hashtags. So for me, I use OC hairstylist, Orange County hairstylist, OC salon, Orange County salon, OC stylist, OC hair. I mean, literally, it's limitless the amount of local hashtags that I use. And then I also use industry related ones. So if I want to get featured on, you know, Modern Salon or Cosmoprof or American Salon, I hashtag them. And then I always use hashtags that I think my ideal clients are looking at. So um, hashtag balayage, hashtag balayage highlights, hashtag, um, you know, I do hashtag color blonde babe, you know, yeah, be color light. correction. Yes. And then you want to make sure that you're always using all 30 hashtags. The reason why is it gets you more places to be seen. So why would you only use five mm -hmm. when you could use 30? Like utilize the tools that Instagram has built in and use all 30 hashtags so that you have more places to be seen. It's literally putting your business card out at 30 different places instead of just five places. So yes, use all 30 hashtags. And then personally for me, I like to put them in the comment below um, my post just because I, I think it looks a little cleaner. Mm -hmm. um, so all I do is when I'm typing out my caption, I write out my hashtags at the same time and then I just go through and cut them out and then post my photo and then immediately I post it in the comment right below. So that just keeps it looking clean. And that's just kind of the blogger in me wanting to do that. Mm -hmm. So, Do you know absolutely. about the keyboard? Um, um, oh my gosh, what is the word that I'm thinking? It's the keyboard shortcut. Oh, I have heard about that. So I don't have an iPhone, but I have oh, that's right. an iPhone. Okay, okay. Yes. Do you know the So trick? there is, there is a keyboard. I will probably do a separate video for this okay. because there's like a little simple step-by-step -step yes. and I posted it in my Instagram. So if you want to scroll through to try to figure that out, there's a simple way. But another way you can do it is just type out your hashtags in your notes, copy and paste, and then edit them to be for whatever you're posting, for vivids, for blondes, for extensions. Right. You just have like your main one. So I always hashtag my name, um, my city, my whatever like products that I use. So Redken, Fremar, Olaplex, right. and then I can just delete the ones that I don't need and add the ones that I do need. So. And because I have an Android phone, which I think is a one-up versus iPhone, <laughs> to be honest, I actually have a um, keyboard that's not the standard keyboard that comes on my phone. It's actually one called Swift Key. I don't know if you can oh, get it for oh, iPhone. Yeah. I'm sure you can. But the cool thing about it is I don't even have to save my hashtags because it actually remembers what I type. So 
as I start to type in my hashtags, like I literally write hashtag and it's like Jamie Dana hairstylist. So I type in that and it's like balayage and it's like blonde because it knows, it kind of knows my actions. So if I'm typing out ones that are like related to blonde balayages, it already remembers. So I literally just type it all out and it remembers all my hashtags for me. So if you guys are looking for some kind of fun tool, um, Swift Key, it's literally a um, free app, but it's a separate keyboard for your phone, and then you just switch your regular keyboard to this one, and it, and it works great. That's such so, a great tip. Yeah. Well, there you go, Android users, so nice. if we have some of you. And it might actually work, I think they have it for iPhone too. Probably. But I don't know, to Probably. be totally honest. <laughs> okay, so for the last question, okay. for a drum roll, what is your biggest tip that you could share with someone on building with Instagram, everything, what would you say is your biggest tip to, start to share with your stylist? Okay, so my biggest thing that I have been preaching recently, um, social media, as you guys know, has completely changed our industry, mm -hmm. right? Um, you, it's no longer like, if you should be on social media, like you have to be on social media. And obviously you guys are watching this video, so you guys already know that. If I know. you don't have an Instagram for your hair, like you should have an Instagram, Instagram for your hair. So like, you guys already know that, right? So we're past that. But with that, social media has like completely evolved and changed within the last year within mm -hmm. the last six months like literally certain things that I was teaching a year ago are different than what I'm teaching now because just the way that Instagram has changed and evolved so what I'm currently talking about right now is I think it's really important to show personality with your Instagram um, I want to see not just hair photos I want to see like something a little bit more so don't just show me the mugshot hair photos so you guys know what I'm talking about right the one where you spin your client around and you take a photo of the back of their head and it's your blonde balayage. Okay, everyone does mm -hmm. that same exact photo and there's nothing that's making you stand out from everyone else. So it's really important to add some personality. So maybe that means adding personality within your hair photos and you don't have to not post hair photos. I think obviously you should, but have a little bit more fun with your clients. So instead of having like just a photo where I'm like smiling with my hair, here's my haircut, <laughs> have your client like do something like this where you like bring their hair down and like have them, you know, maybe some curls and do something like that and have them like look down to the side and take this photo. And then maybe have them like put their hands in their hair and do something like this, this photo. Okay, that's adding a little bit of personality. And if my clients have something fun, like some fun necklace or jewelry or rings, I actually just posted a photo the other day where my client had these really cool like turquoise rings. And so I had her like kind of go like this with the hair and I took the, the photo right here. And it was like focusing on her rings with her beautiful balayage dimension in the background. It's, like, it's, a it's just a really picture. cool, it's a cool way to do that. So add personality into your Instagram by taking more fun photos. Have your clients shake their hair, have them play with their hair, have them smile and laugh and do something fun. Bring out your client's personality with your hair photos. Which and might I, be weird. Let me just say, it, it, it might it, be it, weird for them, but it actually gives them a lot of confidence right. because you're taking this picture that's making them be a little bit vulnerable, but like you're super excited about their hair and I think they get even more excited. Oh my gosh. My clients, I show them the photos after we take photos mm -hmm. of their hair and they're like, that's my hair. Like, that's like the Pinterest photo I showed you. And I'm like, yeah, yeah that's, that's literally <laughs> you. And they're like, can you send that to me? And then I send them the photo and they post it on their page mm -hmm. and they share it with their audience. Like, duh. Um, so anyways, show personality within your hair photos and then also take more than hair photos. So I want to see details of your salon. Show me photos of the salon you work at, photos of your station, photos of your shears and your business card or photos of products hanging out on the shelf. Um, show me details of your salon and then please, Post photos of yourself. I think it's so important for people to see who you are. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times I go on stylist pages and their profile photo is a picture of hair and then, you know, their... their big hair stylist. Big too. hair stylist. There's like literally no photos of them. And, and you're like, like, oh my gosh, wait, that, what? that's that person? I, I have they, no idea. Yeah. I don't even know what they look like. So make sure that you're showing off a photo of yourself every once in a while. Doesn't need to be a selfie every week. Doesn't need to be all the time. But make sure that your <laughs> audience knows who you are. Because I think it's so important that when your audience especially a new client clicks on your page, they want to see what you look like. Um, how many times have you been a client mm -hmm. before and you go to a salon or wherever, maybe when you were younger, before you did hair, and you're like, okay, does this stylist have a bio? Like, I want to see what they look like. You would go on the website and you would check out their bio and their picture because you want to see what they look like. Because most times people say, oh my gosh, I love your hair. Right. I, like, hairstylists are inspirational for our hair, our makeup, our clothes, everything. So yeah. you need to have the whole, the thing. whole package yeah. because aesthetically like me coming into her salon today I'm like 
I love her outfits whenever she posts outfits. I love her Thanks. salon. <laughs> and I know that, like, on some level, we already connect. Right. So. And that's what I'm trying to do with my Instagram. I'm trying to connect with people and connect with the right type of people, mm -hmm. right? Like, her and I, obviously, we're, like, good friends. We get along. I want to connect with those type of people. Like, I don't want to connect with people that, like, I maybe don't get along with. So mm -hmm. I do things to connect with people like her. Um, and one last thing that I want to recommend with your page is... If you are going to post a photo of yourself or maybe a personal photo, maybe of you and your partner or you and your kid um, or whatever it is, you doing something that you love, just make sure that it goes with your Instagram page. So nothing's worse than when I see all these beautiful hair photos and then like this weird selfie picture. Mm -hmm blurry and dark and not with the rest of everything. So if you are going to post a, you know, maybe for your first selfie, if you've never done one on your page, take a photo where you take photos of your clients with your ring light and take a nice photo of yourself or have a coworker take a photo, a couple photos of you just like hanging out, laugh, have fun. Don't just like make it like all awkward, like a portrait, mm -hmm. right? Have fun with it a little bit. And that will at least go with your Instagram page because it's similar lighting, similar background to your yeah. client. So yeah. that's kind of a way to do that. Um, but yeah, Anyways, I love that's my it. Biggest advice that I recommend. So add personality. I want to see a little personality. Yeah. Get rid of the mugshot hair photos. I'm done with that. <laughs> I know some of my like biggest things because I am known as a color correction specialist. Mm. I can post like this crazy before and after, and I get a certain level of engagement. I will go and post a picture of my daughter Willow, and it's like oh man, way Through more, way yes. more engagement, and yeah. people are able to connect with me because I'm a mom and I have a little baby. Or they might not even be a mom. They just think my kid's cute or something like that. Yeah. It just makes it to where they can see my face. They know who I am. And then I'm a real person. I'm not just a hairstylist. She's like, not the great powerful aunt <laughs> right there, right? She's I, like a real I have a life and yeah. I love surfing. And I'm, I'm actually known for I love mermaids. So oh. that's something that I always like to kind of talk about. So it's fun things like that that show people you're more than just hair, which in turn, again, you get more interaction because we get to be social with each other yeah. on more than just a love for hair. Yeah, and you're creating emotional connecting points mm -hmm. with your audience and potential clients. Like people want to connect with people, right? They don't want to connect with the screen. So I think it's really, really important to make sure that you're connecting on those emotional, that emotional level. and. Honestly, she knows her audience. Her audience is probably YouTubers that have watched her go through her entire mm -hmm. pregnancy and, you know, people that have watched you, you know, give birth and have this child and like, All of it. And, and they <laughs> love it. And that's like, you know how to speak to your audience. So I think it's really important to, if you are going to start incorporating more personality into your Instagram by posting personal photos, know who your audience is mm -hmm. and know who you're speaking to because you want to make sure you're not like posting up. Like for me, I have three dogs. I'm not going to post like... 10 photos in a row of my three dogs because yeah. my audience doesn't really care. But every once in a while, they love the fact that I love my dogs mm -hmm. and my audience appreciates that. So anyways, it goes back to that. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff we talked about today. I think a lot of stuff. Good. Yeah. So to wrap everything up, you've talked about Oh Hot Graham. Yes. So why should hairstylists come check out Oh Hot Graham? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm asking why, but like you really should. <laughs> um, so tell us again, just a little snapshot of okay. what that's going to do and how it's going to go way more in depth. So you okay. just, you just go ahead. All right. So <laughs> Oha Graham, like I said, I really created it for people that felt overwhelmed. They felt frustrated with social media. They see, you know, other stylists saying not accepting new clients in their bio and they're like, dude, I can't even get any clients. Like mm -hmm. what's going on? You know, stylists that are like, I see other amazing hairdressers. I feel like I'm just as good, but why doesn't it translate in my photos? Why doesn't it look good that way on my Instagram page? Like, what am I doing wrong? I see other educators selling out their education classes and I can't sell two tickets. Like, what am I doing wrong? Like, is it me? Is it my photos? Like, I literally have nowhere to go. And maybe maybe you're a stylist that's just starting out in the industry and you're just so overwhelmed with, gosh, now I learned cutting and coloring and now I gotta learn social media. Like, what the heck? Like, where do I start? Or maybe you've been in the industry for like 20 years and you're like, shoot, I gotta get on this social media train. Like, I realize that this is like where things are going and I have to learn it. Or maybe so you're just a stylist like me who's like, cool, I want to learn more. I want to grow me. my business. Yeah. That's me. I have grown right. so much and already gotten clientele because I have watched like two or three of her lives of her little things and I have grown from it. And I like social media everything. Like I live right. on my phone. 
but learning from someone who specializes it and then looks over all kinds of different Instagrams, you get this in-depth knowledge that I'm like, oh, I wouldn't even know to ask that question. Right, right. And that's like, that's what I do is like, I literally like, I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to Instagram. I like, <laughs> I love it. it. Right? I like, love it. I'm like a little techie, not gonna lie. But I make it that way so that I can make it easy for you guys to understand it. And I study Instagram and I and I learn like what the newest trends are and so that you can have a place where you can come and make it easy for you. Because nothing's worse than feeling overwhelmed and feeling frustrated mm -hmm. and just feeling like, okay, I give up. Like I literally don't know what to do. So how can I, what do I need to do? Somebody just please tell me what to do. So with a hot brand, that's what we created in mind for. And it's basically the start to end of how to have an amazing Instagram page that grows your business. So whether that means you're trying to attract clients or you're trying to attract um, other hairstylists, or you're trying to put your name out there in the hair industry, whatever it is, it's going to help you do that. So we basically start in the very beginning of setting up your foundation and setting up your Instagram for success. So setting up goals and learning who you're speaking to through your dream clients. And then we go into branding and how to actually brand your Instagram because that's a new thing that's kind of mm -hmm. coming out. Again, you can't just have that boring only hair photo hair page. That's so boring. So how to brand your Instagram and stand out from the crowd. And then I go into like the Instagram basics, how to set your page up for success. And then we go into photography and video and basically how to take photos with your camera or iPhone, lighting, all, literally all that situation, everything. literally everything. And then after that, we go into how to set up your entire page to make it look really clean and how to figure out what kind of page you want to have. Cause there's actually three different types of page layouts that yeah. I see within the hair industry. Interesting. So I talk you through of like, okay, what page do you have? What page do you want to like, or what, what are you attracted to? What is your audience attracted to? So we go into that. And then from there we go into the strategy behind it, how to actually grow your Instagram page. Cause I, a lot of people ask me, how do I get more followers with Instagram? And mm -hmm. it's not that simple. Mm -hmm. You have to set up the foundation and you have to go and do all these things. And then we can grow your Instagram page. Once your page looks amazing and you're doing all the right things, that's when we can actually start to implement that growth strategy. And then from there, I set you up on a maintenance plan. So how do we actually maintain this entire thing that we built up and this great little baby that we have, my little Instagram page, how do we keep it growing and how do we keep it on a maintenance schedule so that again, we're staying consistent like I talked about earlier. So um, the doors to OHOT Gram are actually closed right now, but we're actually opening them on Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Which is super This exciting. is like perfect timing. She perfect asked me timing. to do this and I was like, dude, this is perfect timing. <laughs> so um, the doors are closed right now, but if you want to get on the wait list, I'm actually giving you guys a little present for people that sign up for the wait list. So all you have to do is go to ohotgram.com and at the top, you can read all the information about the program. You could read all the details and the nitty gritty of whatever's in it, all the bonuses that come with it. Um, and then at the top, and there's a couple buttons throughout, just click those buttons. You enter your email address and that'll put you on the wait list. And when we open up the doors, I'm going to send you guys an email. And again, we're going to have a little present in there for anybody that joins um, through the wait list um, within a certain amount of time. So if you want to get in it again, ohotgram.com and again you can find out all and the information, information I will also link down in the description box after I have gone home and had a second to sit down <laughs> and put this stuff in since we're doing this live yeah so I am like so so ecstatic because what you basically just said is you've done all the research and I have to just sit there and watch you tell me yes how to do it <laughs> I mean you can't really ask for better than that because I myself am a researcher but now I'm a mom, I'm a hairstylist, I'm a YouTuber. I don't have all the time in the world right. to dedicate to trying to figure this stuff out. So this beautiful thing right here <laughs> has already done that and is going to show you how to do this. I mean, she's literally showing you how to make more money in your industry. Oh, yeah. That's incredible. Well, and that's the thing. Like, you can learn all this stuff. Like, I am self-taught. I learned it all. But it mm -hmm. took me three years. Like... A lot of time, and a lot of time, and, and, and I still keep learning, right? Yeah. And so it took me all that time to learn that when you can actually just go in and watch the videos, watch the workbooks, like do it all. And it takes you like a week. So it's like so much easier, so much faster. And then you're going to set yourself up for success because now you have this amazing looking Instagram page that you can start bringing in the clients, bringing in the money. We've had previous students make over $30,000 more a year after doing OHA, which is insane that's to me. Insane. And it blows my mind. And that's what I'm passionate about is 
not just growing your Instagram following because again, it's fun to grow your Instagram following, yeah. but it's more important about actually growing your business and making money and mm -hmm. making money from your Instagram page. So um, again, yeah, we talk about all of that stuff and it, it's, a, it's just a great program. I think it's fun and I, I'm just passionate. If you can't tell, I'm like super excited about Instagram. And so. when I say she knows what she's talking about, she knows what she's talking about because the little like knowledge tips that I get, even if they're really small, I have seen such huge change in the way that I have been getting clients because I just cleaned up my bio a little bit ago on one of her lives. I was literally like phone in one hand, iPad in the other hand, doing all this stuff. And it's made it so much simpler for me as a stylist to show people who I am, where I am, what I do, and to build even more of a following. So she has like over 30,000 people that follow her on her Instagram and it keeps growing like insanely fast. <laughs> so to say that she knows what she's doing, because I mean, guys, I only have 11,000 and she freaked out when she met me a couple years ago and I had 3,000. So like to know that she has 30,000 right now, she knows her stuff. So well, thank, thank you, you thank so you. much for yeah. sitting down and doing this with yes, us. Yes. We're going to do like a few minutes of Q and A. Yes, absolutely. Just so a few. So we're gonna type your you. questions in. I think we have oh, quite a few questions. I know we yeah. did have a few questions. We have today. quite a few questions. This is gonna be interesting because I don't know how. Oh, there oh, we go. There we go. Cool. So we're gonna scroll back through these. This is the thing with live. Like, there's no editing here. So, which is why I love it because I hate editing. So. Yeah. So <laughs> this is super great. So you guys get everything, including the phone calls. So I'm gonna kind of scroll through here, and basically what I'm gonna do is we're gonna answer three questions that I feel like we haven't really gone mm -hmm. over. Yeah. And then you guys are going to win one of these giveaways. Now, oh you oh have to be in the US. I'm so sorry. International giveaways are crazy expensive. Yeah. So, the shipping is just insane. So, you guys have to live in the US, but let me find some questions. Let's I know that see. there were some really good ones. While you're going through that, too, I'm just going to talk yeah. um, a little bit, too. So, also, you guys, I do have a free class tomorrow, not tomorrow night, Thursday night. Thursday night. <laughs> we keep saying tomorrow. We were like, is today Wednesday? <laughs> I don't even know what day it is. Okay, so. Thursday night, it's at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and um, if you guys want any information about that, it's kind of a little bit of what we talked mm -hmm. about today, but a little bit more structured and a little different. So we talked about like the five plus three method, but I'm actually gonna walk you guys through, oops, I'm gonna walk you guys through exactly what you need to have in your bio like we talked about today, but you guys can see it a little visually. Um, I'm gonna go through some hair photography tips, and all of that fun stuff. So that's actually this Thursday night. It's totally free. So it's a free class. It's like it's like it's basically held on YouTube. Yes. Um, just on a, a, a separate site for me. But um, it's this Thursday night, the 22nd at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you guys want to sign up for that, it's the link in my Instagram bio, which is um, just Jamie Dana Hairstylist. Or you can just go to jamiedana.com slash free class and that will get you in there. So um, yeah, if you guys wanted to come to that, she's taking little screenshots I'm taking of our screenshots questions of right now. People. Um, but yeah, so that way, if you guys want to get into that, it's totally free again this Thursday at 6 p.m. I think I said that like three times now. Perfect. But, yeah. All right. So we have our first question. That's something that we didn't cover. Yes. Um, I believe it's, how do you pronounce that? Mariella. Mariella. Yeah. So do you prefer to take your Instagram hair pics mm -hmm. with an iPhone or an actual camera or any picture taking tips, which is something that yes. I skipped That's in okay. the thing. That's okay. Well, but, I'm going to go deep into that on Thursday night's class. If you guys want to come to that, I'm going to show you like visually, like here's what I see in, like people doing on Instagram mm -hmm. and here's what you should do instead. So if you guys are curious about that, you guys can go jump on that class. Like I said, it's totally free. So just sign up for it. Um, but to answer the question about do I take photos or um, with my phone or my camera. So I, when I used to start with Instagram, mm -hmm. I used to just use my phone. Um, however, now I use a camera. And we actually got it here today because I was like, we brought both of ours. This so um, <laughs> this is my little camera that I use. It's so cute, isn't it? Um, this is a Canon SL1. And it's basically a Rebel camera, but I love it because it's small. So the body mm -hmm. of it is really teeny. Um, it fits in my hand. It comes with this lens. And it's the only one they make in white, so that's why I bought it. Oh, um, nice. This Branding. camera, <laughs> brand new. It came out of that. I actually spent like $100 more just to get the white camera. Um, I think this version, the, the white version is like $4.99, um, but the black version is like $3.99. You can amazing. get it on Amazon, you can get it on Canon.com. 
Um, it's a Canon SL1, and this is the camera that I use to take all of my hair photos. Um, and I love it because I can take this with me to events, I can take it with me traveling. Um, it's just this like little lightweight camera, and it fits in my purse, it's amazing. Um, I also use this lens with it, this is the lens that comes with it. This is a 18 to 55 millimeter like kit lens. Mm -hmm. It's a basic lens, it's a good lens, um, but I also use a 50 millimeter 1.8 lens as well. Um, and that's like $100, so it's not that expensive. It's not crazy expensive, um, but yeah, so if you guys have any questions, this is what I use. Perfect, and then I was gonna share, this is my little guy. I used to use I love that a case, by really, the way. I know, so Amazon, because everything Amazon in my life is Amazon on Amazon. Prime. Yeah. So I use this little guy, I used to have a big DSLR, but I found out that this guy actually got it for vlogging and became my BFF. So this is how small this little camera is. It's actually pretty heavy. This is the GX7 Mark II. This little thing oh, pops so out. Cool. You have the full lens that is a, or a screen. touch screen. That's a flip. And the coolest oh. thing too is that when I'm trying to take pictures like this, this thing pops oh. up to where I can take pictures. Like flat lay photos. Yes, Amazing. flat lay photos. Or if you're like trying to get the top of your client's head and you can't see yeah. it, yeah. you can actually see it. And then I use a few different ways in this to take my pictures. And this guy is so small again, and it makes taking pictures really easy. And I get really bummed now when I don't have this and I've left oh, yeah. it at home or the battery dies. Because the quality of pictures, you can take some great pictures on your iPhone. Right. But when you're ready to upgrade these cameras, Mandy is saying the GX7. Yeah, she knows. This Cameron is like, this Cameron. This <laughs> camera <laughs> is super awesome. So is that the camera you use for all your Instagram photos then? I do. This is the camera oh. that I've been using for my YouTube videos, everything. Oh, like yeah. my big, huge DSLR camera that I finally got up to the highest level that I want to go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. It, it sits at home. Yeah. So this little thing I can take everywhere with me yeah. and it's easy. And Mandy says it connects to your iPhone. So yeah. I think yours is Wi-Fi too. So this one actually isn't Wi-Fi, oh, okay. but the reason why I, I don't even want it to be Wi-Fi, I don't even care. So it's not a Wi-Fi, but I put a Wi-Fi card in this. So oh, it's perfect. in a memory card. It's called iFi, so E-Y-E-F-I card. You can get it on Amazon, again, whatever. Um, but it's basically the memory card that's inside the camera. So you just put it in and it connects directly to my phone. So I just turn on my Wi-Fi on my phone oh, wow. and literally as I'm taking photos, it starts transferring them to my phone. It's amazing. That's pretty so awesome. the, the Canon one isn't even as intuitive, the Wi-Fi version of this. I don't even need that. The iFi card is the way to go and it makes it so much easier. I don't have to like plug my phone in and do all that stuff. Like it's I don't so have nice. time for that. So that's the way that I do that. So yeah. All right. So I saw another question here. Let me see if it will pull up. No. <gasps> it's so funny. It's like, no. Oh, here we there go. We okay. Go. I saw They keep someone. disappearing and then popping back. Up. Okay. So Kylie Jones. Oh, as my, my phone's dying. Kylie Jones, what advice can you give to a stylist right out of school? That is, Ooh, that Kylie, is good. Do you want to plug your phone? Yes, I'm going to plug, plug your phone, phone in real quick. <laughs> um, so what advice do I give to somebody at school? Practice. Just keep practicing. Do models. Bring them in. Obviously, when you're first starting out, um, you know, you're going to be like trying to, um, there we go. Um, when you're first starting out, you're not going to have a ton of clients. So do as many models as you can. Get your hands into hair and practice. And the greatest thing about bringing models in is not only are you getting practice with their hair, but you can take a million freaking photos of their hair. So because they're getting free hair, or they're getting like really discounted, really hair. discounted yeah. hair. So um, even as a stylist that's been doing hair for seven, eight years, I just brought in a model the other day. Me and my assistant spent six hours on a girl's hair, um, totally for free. Tons of product. We spent probably a lot of money on her mm -hmm. hair. And I did her hair for free just to get content and to practice a new technique. So I learned a new technique and I wanted to practice it out on somebody and not like a paying client. So um, I brought her in and I was able to get tons of photos. We did a video mm -hmm. with her hair. I actually just posted her video and we've gotten over 50,000 views on my video on Instagram. Um, it's insane. So it was a great way to get content. A great way to get tons of photos. I mean, like literally the photos yeah. we got are like Pinterest worthy photos. I cannot wait to post them. Um, and so all I did was do that. And I now have tons of content to post of her hair. We did her hair straight, then curled, then we braided it, then we did a flower crown in her hair. So now I have like four different a looks, bunch of stuff. a ton of stuff. And so I would recommend that if you're first starting out or trying to build your clientele and you're like, well, I do a lot of old ladies, so I'm not going to post those on Instagram. 
bring in models. It's a great way to get content and to get practice. I mean, it's huge. So not only it, that, but you could also do some of the work that you want to want do, have. the clients Absolutely. that you want to have. Absolutely. So if you want to do vivids, you can bring in, yeah. you know, the sweet little 15 year old who has wants to do vivid hair. You can do it. And then you're going to post pictures and attract those clients because people are seeing, oh, you do that. Yeah. So I could go to you and Absolutely. get it done. Yeah. Another thing is, a, a good place to look for models, is don't go on Craigslist. Mm -mm. A, post on Facebook. Your personal Facebook is a great way. Two, go to Starbucks or places oh. that like a lot of people go, like the, your cool coffee shop or little boutiques that people go to. Ask the girls there if they want to get their hair done because people are seeing their hair a thousand times a day. Mm -hmm. And all day long when they have gorgeous looking hair, people are like, oh my God, where do you get your hair done? And she's like, oh, the girl right down the street. Here, here's her card. That's so Starbucks great. is a great place to get models because they want to usually try fun stuff. And now they can do vivid colors at Starbucks. Yay. So yeah, Starbucks is a great place or cute little boutiques, mm -hmm. places where you think your ideal client would be hanging out is a great place to look for models. That's so great. All right. So we're going to do one last question. By the way, those two people just won. No Let me. Why is this? Oh, there we go. You have to scroll. You swipe. Okay, okay. You pick one. Okay. You go through and pick one. Um... um there are a million, a million comments on this. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, Crystal. Do you find Instagram stories helpful? We're going to talk about that. All one. right. So there Crystal Bees, I believe it's how you say her last name. So Instagram stories. Guys, I love Instagram stories. Um, mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with them. I used to try to use Snapchat a little bit, and Instagram stories came out, and I'm like, Snapchat, you're gone. Sorry. You're I, out. I deleted it, and then I, I just re-downloaded yeah. just for the filters. Just for the filters, I know. <laughs> or Snapchat. I feel bad, but like I think Instagram was really smart, and especially I was thinking about the other day. I was like, they literally like didn't say anything, and all of a sudden, like, bam, Instagram stories. Mm -hmm. They just like dropped it, and they're like, mic drop. Um, but anyways, I think Instagram stories are great. They're a great way to connect with your audience on a personal level. They're an amazing way to show off you know, behind the scenes. They're a great way to educate. I actually just did a Facebook live all about how to use Instagram stories um, on my Facebook page. It's just Jamie Dana hairstylist. If you guys want to go check that out. Um, we did a whole Facebook live all about that. But yes, Instagram stories are great because a lot of times we don't want to post things on our page because it might mess up our page layout or make it not look as cute. Instagram stories, you can do that. Um, the biggest thing that you want to make sure is you just want to make sure that you're always thinking about your audience and thinking about what they want to see. Mm -hmm. So if you're posting like, 10 snaps of your cat, chances are your audience probably doesn't care about that. So make sure that you're not doing like, you know, things that are going to bore your audience, mm -hmm. keep it educational, keep it entertaining. People come, they, we, we literally sit here instead of going on our watching TV, watching yeah. Netflix, we're going on this, phones. we're watching this now. So Instagram stories are basically the new TV and same with Snapchat. It was back in the day. People are watching this now instead of watching their TV. So keep it entertaining. Keep people wanting to see more. Um, and yeah, so that's what I would recommend with that one is make sure that it's going to relate back to your audience and don't bore them. Don't be doing 10 snaps of your cat. Because sometimes I do do a lot of snaps of Willow. And then I look back and I'm all, ooh, maybe we should do Right? <laughs> it's a lot. But you also know your audience like wants to see yeah. that. So I think yeah. that it's totally fine. Just always be thinking in the back of your mind, like, would my audience want to see this? And I am constantly thinking like, Ooh, I could probably Instagram story this and I'm like mm -hmm. would my audience care though like do they really want to see this like probably not so then I won't post it so yeah but it is a fun way to do things that are just more than doing yeah. hair yeah. so you can integrate that on your Instagram and then you can integrate it in to your snap or not your snapchat story <laughs> Instagram your stories. Instagram story we don't say that because word. I love that um since I I'm different I'm a I'm a blogger, so I do more than just hair, even right. though my Instagram is more for just hair. I also have an Instagram just for my family stuff. So I do have a little outlet where I can post things that like all the moms love. But I do a lot of stuff that um, is like me waking up with my baby mm -hmm. and then me going to work or like what makeup I'm wearing. So it goes into like the other side of it so people can see more than just my hair. So it still relates around to me as a hairstylist um, being a mom, getting ready, doing my makeup, yeah. what products I'm putting in my hair that day to do my hair, and then what I'm doing at the salon. Yeah. So, and that's totally cool. So yes, Instagram stories, if you don't already use them, 
you need to use them. They're so, so fun. And again, they just really add a different, they get rid of that like all in powerful mm -hmm. Oz on your page. They make you seem like a real person because you are a real person, duh, right? They mm -hmm. make you more relatable. They make those emotional connecting points with your audience. And somebody asked real quick um, to what is the card that I use for my uh, phone or my camera? It's called the iFi card. So just so you know. There you go. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, we have been on here with you for quite a while. Yes. Um, it always goes over what I think it's going to be. Know, I'm like, oh, maybe like 20, 30 minutes. And uh, we're all like probably like an hour six and a half. Hours later. Who knows? Yeah. But um, I know that I'm going to go through and go and like answer some of your guys' questions and stuff like that. But again, everything that Jamie has been saying, her oh, hot gram, um, these type of links, I'm going to link in the description box for you guys to have easy access. If you guys... <laughs> We have if some trolls guys, going on over here. If you guys here. want nice. to um, go check her out, check out her Instagram. Um, it's what is your Instagram again? Jamie Dana Hairstylist. So it's there real I easy. Am. My name Jamie Dana Hairstylist. And if you search it, it comes up. So super easy. Yeah. So this is on YouTube Live, but guess what? This is staying on my YouTube channel. Yay. So it's not going to disappear. So if you want to share this with other stylists in your salon or you want to come back to it and just kind of get a notepad, maybe you're at the salon and got to watch like parts of it, it's going to be on here. So um, she's also, again, doing the thing on Thursday night and then also opening her doors for Oh Hot Graham. So all of it's here for you guys. If you guys want to know even more on how to boost your business, grow a clientele, learn to be social, all those things, this girl's got it figured out for us. So thank you so much for hanging out for, with us tonight. Yes. Thank you so much yeah. for doing this Dude, with thanks me. thanks for having me. This has been so much fun. I love just like connecting with other people, even though we have like trolls going on in the background. I think it's <laughs> but I love hanging out with other hair. Like this is what I love doing. So yes, um, please, if you guys watch this live or watching this on replay, please come leave a comment on my Instagram. I love to connect with you on Instagram because again, social, meeting you. So um, connect with me on my Instagram and come say hi. I'd love to meet you guys too. So yeah. All right, guys, we are going to head out for the night, and um, I hope you guys have an amazing evening, and I'll see you guys in my other videos. Yeah. Bye, Bye guys. Let's see if I can finish it.